Hi, I'm Jewel Pearson, and this is my handmade home in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've lived in the tiny house for seven years. I designed my home from graph paper and um, have expanded since that time and just adore my tiny house. Born in Brooklyn, didn't live there very long, but I love big buildings and mid-rises and moving traffic and people moving, and that's kind of where I feel like I get energy from. And I can honestly say I would not have been able to live in this area when I first started my tiny house journey because I was still so connected to needing that energy from the city. But over the course of seven years, life change, energy change. So now being on a friend's farm is the piece that I didn't even really know I needed. So I was young, um, my early 20s, and the responsibility of motherhood, single motherhood. You know, at that point it was often balancing the checkbook to the penny. And I just knew that once I got her okay, I wanted to get to a point where I could decide, no, I'm going to just, you know, buy this frivolously, not I've got to pay this bill and pay this bill and now we've got $20 left. Like I wanted to be in a, a, a where I've always felt like it was lighter. And I stumbled on a story of a woman who had built a tiny house and it was her story of, of kind of rebuilding after divorce and losing things and you know that wasn't my journey but more resonated with me like this is me, this is doing it for me, I'm starting over. And at that point I decided I'm building a tiny house. This was 2012, 2013-ish, and there wasn't a lot of information about tiny houses like there is now. The movement at that point was so focused on minimalism and you don't build a house bigger than 18 feet. And there were like so many things about what a tiny house wasn't. But for me, it was my retirement plan. So I'm doing all the things. So this is the crown jewel, if, if I might say that. This is the original tiny house space. This is where the dream started. I knew I needed to have windows all around so that no matter where I put my house, that I'd have light coming in, you know. Um, a sunrise, a good sunrise and a sunset just like make my entire life. I've got a full-size bathroom. It's got a washer-dryer combo unit in it, a bathtub. And the funny thing is I don't use it as much as I imagined that I would. Most of the time that I use it, it's Nina getting a bath and not me. Um, but yes, one of the important things for me, and it's one of the things that I say for people interested in tiny houses, make it your own. Make it include things that make home for you. So I have a beautiful floating staircase, and at the bottom of the staircase, there's a landing which can be used for seating. I don't have a lot of multifunction things in the house. Um, the original flip up desk that was in the corner in the nook, I've, I've taken that out completely. A lot of tiny houses have storage where they'll put their clothes in the couch and the couch list lifts up and you get your clothes out. I didn't do a lot of multifunction. I wanted to think through so I wasn't moving stuff out of the way all the time and you know, re-navigating the space because I, I knew long-term that would get old for me. One overhead loft is my sleeping space, and then the other is kind of a plant nook chill space. And then coming through, pantry, storage, and then this is my kitchen, and I can cook, I just don't like to cook. So I didn't, um, devote a lot of kitchen space, but I have a very functional kitchen. This is a microwave and a convection oven, so I can bake and do all of those things. Two burner cooktop, and then back here is the closet. The original tiny house had a very small screened in porch here and an overhead Juliet balcony. And so this is all new. Um, it is built on a foundation and this is dedicated office space and then just having the, the living space and room for my plants. Really, it's a room that I built for my plants. <laughs> so this is, you know, original tiny house. This part that you see right here is original tiny house and I didn't want to cover it up. Um, I felt like it would be beautiful as part of the design. 
I don't know that I have a design style, like it's just kind of like by eye. I feel like the mask a part of who I am, generationally, like the, the core of my existence. It's a, a connection, even though you don't, as a woman of color, black woman, I don't really know my roots. That is something that I'm working on now, but it feels, it still feels like home for me. It feels like part of my connectedness to, to who I am, and I wanted all of that to be part of my home. So this was just like kind of the beautiful open space and then I realized, oh, there's coyotes out here, so we need some, some a little barrier. Um, so that was the purpose of the screen. And I used like the polycarbonate overhead so I still will have light in here. Right now it's my most favorite space. Maybe it's because it's the newest space. So, in my mind, you know, as I was thinking like the lighter lifestyle, I saw myself traveling and I still thought I was building a tiny house space that I could travel with. And then when I bought the trailer and started building, I was like, what were you thinking? You can't travel with this. <laughs> and so um, it is like home base. It's going to stay stationary. It provides my lifestyle of freedom, but I still want to have the opportunity to travel with home. And so that's the travel trailer. It also has a bathroom, a shower bathroom in it. So it's small enough that I can manage myself, but it's also big enough to be self-sufficient. So that's kind of my next project. It's all really budget driven, but um, I'm thinking, hoping that I can get it done by the end of this year. So advice for people who are thinking about getting into tiny house living. I think from the beginning, you need to really evaluate how you use your space, the things that you have to have in your space that are important to you. And I always say, you know, go from a list of must have, um, nice to have, and, and the wish list. You've really got to, to know you and know yourself and, and the things that are gonna make you comfortable in that space. My initial parking space was in an RV park. Um, and I was there for, I was there from May to October. RV parks aren't always safe spaces for people of color, black people, and I ran into some issues there. And so that kind of forced the move. Um, and I've had that issue another time in a rural space. So it's, it's kind of where can you put a tiny house is, is one of the issues. And then there's the, the challenge of where can you put a tiny house as a, a, as a black person, as a person of color that you have to think about safety. Unfortunate, but the reality. There's some statistics. I think it says the tiny house movement is either 97% or 95% white. And so a lot of my work in the movement is representation, showing black people and people of color as part of the movement. Um, talking to the concerns that you'll have as part of the movement in addition to just the overall where can I put a tiny house but what does that look like for me um, and then also I think it became important for me early on to show tiny house living as a viable option versus people just thinking tiny house people were weird um, the racism in conventional home buying it's it's a known issue. You can look at cities and know exactly how the redlining was done because of the way people are located, the way highways are run. At the bottom of the list for home ownership, the percentages of black people, is, it still remains year after year at the bottom of that list. Um, the conversation around tiny houses is one of the things where it's an opportunity to get to home ownership quicker. It is an opportunity for wealth building, even if it's not the traditional equity in your home. Um, conversation that so many people say you know buying a conventional home allows you to build equity and a tiny house doesn't but there's still the opportunity of I own my home and so that income that I would be using to pay for a mortgage I can invest that I can save that and so there's a non-traditional opportunity for wealth building and if we are challenging the status quo of housing with tiny houses we should challenge the entire thing um, the inequity. I want the people who have not had access to housing to be included in this conversation and to be at this table. That is kind of where I feel like um, my work, what my work is.
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to Handmade for more tours like this. Thanks for checking out my house.